All right, today on Study Ball, we're going to take a look at one of the best young quarterbacks in the National Football League, and Justin Herbert. Um, played hurt last Thursday night with the rib injury. Um, you know, had some highs and lows in this game, and, and that's a tough thing. Turning around and playing from Sunday to Thursday, oftentimes those teams, those quarterbacks, don't always play their best. But the great thing about these quarterbacks, these good young quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, is even when they don't bring their A game, they still make some special plays. But I use study ball not only to show you how great these quarterbacks are, but also to teach, to teach what's going on, to teach young quarterbacks and, and coaches how to adjust different things to help out your quarterback to be successful. And so this tape is as much about Justin Herbert and how special he is as it is about teaching and looking at certain aspects of the game where he and anybody that plays a position can learn and grow from different things that went on. Okay, so we always have to remember that this is just uh, hand-picked plays. I'm not showing every pass play, but just hand-picking different things to show how good the quarterback is, to show different concepts and what may be done differently to help the quarterback or where even even the greats, Justin Herberts and the Patrick Mahomes, miss certain plays or, or can see things just a little bit differently that might help them. So here we go right off the bat. We're going to run a play that we call combo. Okay, so it's slant, flat, back to this side, and pop to the other side. So we've got a pop route, we've got a pop route, and then we've got a swing route. So really depends on the coverage, on, on how you read this. We really want to read this combo tide uh, when we've got a one high safety. Okay, so now we can isolate one player to the backside if we don't have that look. And we've got off coverage to the other side. Then we can read this to the other side, off coverage here. And we would read, because again, you see one, two, three guys, we would read these two defenders over here to get the advantage to the front side. So what do I want to show on this particular play? Okay, so we've got a slant flat down here at the bottom. What I want to talk to all quarterbacks about is seeing the initial look of a particular play. So we know that we're going to have this. Okay, and normally when we're throwing this particular play, we like to hit the slant. The slant's where we're going to get the big plays. If we can hit that guy running uh, in stride, we get a big play, we're up on the safety and all of that. So we're always thinking slant first, but we want to be able to change our read based on the coverage look that we have. So you notice right here, we've got press on the outside. We've got off, okay, so this guy's covering the tight end man-to-man, -man, or if he's a linebacker and he's covering that space, he's got that far to go. So when we get this particular look, I always like to think of this almost the opposite because I get press here, lots of stuff can happen here. I can get jammed, it can throw me off. I can lose that battle. But as I'm pushing up to run this slant, oftentimes if I'm pressed there, we get almost a natural rub with this guy. He's either got to go over the top of the slant or he's got to slow down and go around that slant, which gives us an advantage to this flat because of the type of look that we have. So you see it right here. See it? Okay, so we're coming off. We've got that distance. This guy's got to slow up seeing what's going on and going around it. Here's the throw right here. Now Justin Herbert comes out and looks to this side. I'm not sure what takes him away from this side. Initially, he's got this throw but does a nice job of working back through his progression here. And he's going to look inside and then he would look outside because we basically have a two on one there. So probably could have kept going with this, but makes a great throw to the outside shoulder of Mike Williams, who makes a great diving catch and they make this work. But we're looking at this concept down here. If this guy was off, okay, and this guy was pressed, now we're thinking, slant because this guy's not going to be in the way he's going to cover that flat right now we're thinking slant on the outside so just a lot of it depends on yes slant to flat is how we think about this but we want to see the big picture as quarterbacks and understand that maybe we go flat to slant based on a particular look that we get i love this play right here but again, always about teaching. So this is a play that we used to call dodge. So 
we've got a corner route here, and then we've got a bit of a choice route here uh, by Carter. And so he's got the choice to be able to push up, hook, go outside, and then maybe he has the ability to go inside. Not sure if that's an option for them, but this is the play that we're running. So what we always like to do with this play is we like to attack the outside defender. So what I would love to see here is you got the corner here and we know that we're going to get a high low off of this guy. So we want to force the issue. If the outside guy or the flat defender is a corner, okay, so it's a corner, he's usually playing some deep responsibility unless it's cover two. What we like to tell our guys is go ahead and push up and break out, okay? Because when we break out, now we force the isolation on this guy high low. Problem is, is if we push up and then hook back to the inside, defense has the ability to drop off here and they have the ability to expand here. So a lot of this is basic uh, trying to see who's covering this outside, who's covering this flat area. And if we err, we always want to err breaking out because that ultimately gives us a high low. If we don't break out or we hook inside or we break inside, it doesn't give us an isolation on one guy here. So nice job. He goes and he turns to the outside and we forced a bit of that high low because he got enough width here, uh, you know, to, to force that and keep this guy to the inside. But if you ever run in a route like this and you've got a choice as a receiver, we also like to bounce a little bit to kind of see what's happening. But always think to yourself, air on the breakout so you stay away from the inside defender and you isolate this guy high low. But nice read by Justin Herbert right here. Sees it, sees the corner start to fall back, turn his hips to the inside, boom. Bang it on Carter right there. Nice completion, nice read, nice little gain. All right, so here's another one. Similar idea, right? We're gonna come off here, we're gonna run the corner. We ran a jet sweep here, but this guy's basically running a swing route, which turns into our flat. So once again, we're reading this defender. Then we would work back to the inside. This guy fell, this guy chased. Now we replace back to the inside. So again, nice read here by Justin, right? Sees this guy turn and fall off. Now he's got his swing route to the outside. Only thing I'm gonna talk about is technique, okay? So it doesn't matter how good you are. Technique can always drive you and lead you to success. So what I want you to see is when Justin steps, he's stepping down that hash, down the line. So he's stepping that direction. He's trying to throw this direction. His power goes with his steps because the multitude of our power is going to work with our body, not with our arm. So the power's going down that line, going to the deeper throw, going down the hash, and he's trying to throw it outside of that line. So naturally, what do you think is gonna happen? If his power's going this way and he's trying to throw it this way, the ball normally goes where his power goes. Not that you can't make these completions, you can, but you see what happens right here, right? Ball hard up the field where he steps, the ball goes, missed completion opportunity right there on that particular play. So all the little things, we're talking about little things. Seeing the little details is what quarterback play is all about. Great quarterbacks make up for it with great plays, but we wanna be able to make the layups first and then add everything else to the mix. Okay, so a couple things here, and again, teaching as much as anything. So we're gonna run a little play right here, hook or possibly a return, a play that we call bullets off to this side, and then we're gonna run that same pop concept back the other side. Okay, so what are we looking at over here? Okay, the first thing that we look at is I wanna look at technique here. I like this play usually when I've got an off corner so I can isolate one linebacker or one player 
to that side. So that's when I normally like it. But if I get man to man, so I get press on the outside, that's another way I like it. So as I get in here, we're trying to force whoever's in man to man on the back to go over the top of us and give us a throw. A little teaching point here as we come off of this. Okay. So you see right there, right here, we're going to go and then we're going to bounce over the top of it. So as I run, just keep your eyes on that. Watch the little adjustment over the top right there. Okay. So as a quarterback, I'm expecting to have that because I got press on the outside. I'm expecting this guy to have to force over the top of Mike Williams with depth. So what I need, if I'm a coach, what I need from this guy is I need a little bit more width. So this is a combination route between a swing and a wheel. So this guy would continue down the field and run a wheel. If this defender came running up to him and matched to him right now, we're just going to run by him. But the first look always needs to be the quick swing right here. So if this guy's gonna go up over the top and he's gonna be this far away from my back, I wanna be able to catch it as a quarterback and pop the ball right to my back right here and let him go with the shoulders downhill one-on-one -on -one with the man guy. So what happens here is the back takes this a little bit too far down the field and he's not looking. So by the time he has a chance to throw it right there, he peeks right there, right? That's a tough throw at that point as he peeks right there. Because if I throw it, this guy's already coming downhill and he's going to blow that play up. So if I can get my back to go a little bit wider here on this and be ready for the football right now, I can catch it as Justin Herbert. I can throw it to my back right here and I can allow him to go one-on-one -on -one with the guy that is playing him man-to-man, -man, okay? Because of the bad course there, I can't take it even though I wanted to take it. Now I've got to work back to the other side. So he's going to work back just like we saw before. He's going to go three, he's going to go four, and then this back is getting out through here. But here's the next part of this that's so important is that it's really tough to run this concept to the front side if you're checking your back, okay? So the back is checking responsibilities to linebackers for blitz and whatever, and then he's going to try to leak to the flat, okay? We always got to make sure that our secondary routes are connected to our checkdowns. So as Justin has to work through this, right? This guy's covered. I want to be able to isolate this guy flat to curl, but I can't. Why? Because the back is checking and getting out late, getting out late, getting out late. So I never get this guy stretched to be able to read the curl behind him to the back. So you see him, he's waiting for the back. He's like, this guy's in the way. He's covering this one and he still has the ability to cover this one because of the check and the late release. And now he's put in a bind and now we have an incomplete pass when it really should. We had numbers over there, right? We have numbers. We've got two against one off of that linebacker. But because we checked the back, we put ourselves in a bind and we've got nothing to throw there. So on that play, you either change the concept to the backside or you change the back and get him out quickly so you get an advantage back over there. All right, so right here, I get it. We've got Mike Williams. We've got a guy that wins 50-50 balls. He won a number of 50-50 balls in this game. So I understand and I get press coverage and I think it's man to man, that's not ever really a bad option. But again, we're, we're, we're just teaching here, okay? So here's the situation. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Back goes over here to six. So as a quarterback, we're hot to that side. Hot means if this guy comes, we have nobody to block him. So we've gotta beat him with the throw. So these are the decisions we have to make as quarterbacks on what we're gonna do if they make us hot. Here he comes, he's hot. What am I going to do right here? You're gonna notice we've got a great concept to the front side, because there's only one defender over here that if I wanna to read to the side of the blitz, which oftentimes we say, see pressure, attack pressure, because when they're pressuring from a particular side, they're usually leaving a void to that side. So Justin has to make a decision. Do I have an advantage? Do I wanna get out the quick throw to the left-hand side? Or do I want to throw the go route to the right-hand side? Okay, because you see it. Look front side first. You see it, right? 
that guy stretches, there's a quick, easy little throw that they pick up and we go one-on-one -on -one with an easy completion right there. This is always harder. Lower percentage throws when you're running a press go route, one of the lowest percentage throws in football. Even if you've got a stud like Mike Williams, and there you see it, right? Incompletion, I gotta rush the throw a little bit because I'm hot, I gotta get it out there, and then I gotta hope everything's perfect and my guy goes up and makes that 50-50 play. Okay, like this concept here. Okay, so these are what we call seven stops. Pushing up, going to a corner, which is a seven route, and then we're turning around and hooking here, up, and then we're turning around and hooking, a guy in the middle, and then what we have is, should have flats to both sides. Okay, flats to both sides. So idea is we get corner off, corner off on both sides. Idea is we're gonna read a high low off of one of these defenders over there, okay? He can either take the flat or he can take the seven stop. Same thing on this side, and we're gonna isolate that particular guy on that play, okay? So here's another issue. What are we doing? Okay, we're checking our back again, okay? We're checking our back. So this time, our back is actually checking what looks like both sides, okay? So we're giving him a dual read, so he's gonna check to one linebacker, and then he's gonna have to check to the other linebacker, so we're scanning him, so we're trying to pick up as many blitzes as we possibly can. Okay, no problem, if you wanna run that protection, do not run this to that side, because this is a dead play if my back doesn't get out to the flat, because once again, we, we cover ourselves up and we don't influence that underneath guy. So if you wanna do that, put the backside guy on something else. Okay, put them on a 12-yard speed out. So if I get one-on-one -on -one and these guys are all tucked inside, I can just take that as an alert. If I don't like that, then I'm going to read to the side that we've got a guy getting to the flat so he can clear it out. We mirror it up and the quarterback goes, oh, I wanna to go to the left-hand side, but now I don't get my back out to throw it. So as a quarterback, I've gotta realize, okay, my back might not get out to the left-hand side. So you see, what is Justin Herbert doing here? He's looking over here. He's looking at this one because he feels like, man, everybody else is pushing to the strong side. Let me work the weak side. Oh, but I can't because this guy's stuck in here and he never gets out there to pull that defender because as you see it right there, right? That's what he's looking for. He's looking to throw in that window right here. This guy eventually gets out there. So if he's on that side, he should just stay there and throw his underneath route. But he really should be coming back to this side right off the bat knowing I'm in trouble because my back has to check. But he might not even think about that because he's just thinking, oh, I got seven stops and flats to both sides, but we have to take into consideration what this guy's responsibility is on a particular play, all right? Next piece to it, coaches, players, okay? Watch this right here. He runs a flat and then he stops right inside the numbers. We've got a seven stop coming behind it, keep running. Keep running, get outside the numbers, get out to about four yards from the sideline, and then you can slow down. Do not slow down here, because again, it allows this guy to play both of them because we're not forcing him, right? You see it right there. He's gonna stop, so this guy's in position to hold this off and come and make a play on that, and we haven't put him in a bind. Keep running, keep running. Okay, nice move afterwards, but you see it. He's in no man's land. We make a good tackle right there, and we're down because of the little details of every single part of every play. Okay, so this is a play that we call pylon over. So we get press, we're going here, we're running to the pylon, then we're pushing up and we're running an over and then off the play action, we'll have a guy in the flat so we get three layers right here off of the defenders. Okay, we're in man-to-man -man coverage right here, so the layers aren't as important. But what's the read? Okay, the read starts right here, and I'm just simply looking at that defender right there. Now, again, we could say Mike Williams has, his, have him, has him beat a little bit, but I look at that with a guy that's going to the outside. He's got outside 
the corner has outside leverage on him. So I know if I throw the ball where the receiver's going, he's going to have to go over the DB to catch it. Now we'll run this one time and he throws it and it's exactly what the receiver does, right? The defender's right there. I got to go over him and get it. But my guy go, goes over him and gets it. Another great play by Mike Williams. But I want you to just watch. I'm simply looking at leverage as much as anything. I don't see any separation there. And so that's going to be a tough throw. We can still make it and that guy can still make a great play, but come off to the other side. You know, again, we're looking at little things. What am I looking at? Before the snap, I see press here. I see off and outside leverage to that side. So I know when this guy's coming across, I'm going to have great leverage on the over. Yes, I'm still going to peak this because Mike could win in man to man. He beats the press right now. I'm in great shape, but I know I've got something really good coming from the other side. So you don't have to force it, right? Again, I, I don't know what he saw. I don't know why he feels that's a, that's a great relationship. Or maybe again, it's just, hey, it's Mike Williams against anybody. Throw the ball up because the guy's chasing him. I think we'll win the 50-50 balls. We'll get a PI. Okay, that's very likely. And I can buy into that theory if that's why you're doing it. But if you see that guy running outside leverage, knowing what you had initially, come off to that deep over and you see it right there. That deep over is an easier big chunk play as well, even though Mike goes up and makes a great play. Okay, I really like this one. So again, I want you to watch the flats. Run, run, get out there to the flat. Get out there to the flat, because once again, we're gonna run little hooks back to the inside. So we wanna really separate to force these underneath defenders to move in that direction so we can uncover back to the inside. Okay, so a little bit slow going out there, but based on the coverage that they have, so again, this is a pick em side. Okay, what do I mean by a pick em side? I simply mean we got the same route on both sides. We're gonna really count numbers. So really, if this guy's playing up and this guy's playing up, okay, we really don't have an advantage anywhere because they've got a pretty even look and what we would call cover two. So they've got five guys underneath. So there's not really any zones underneath. If he felt this guy was in off coverage, then we want to go to this side, which is I think what he does right here because now it gives us an advantage of we're going to have to force these guys to move to cover and then our back is still going to go to that side so we gain the advantage over there so that's why i think he looks to the left okay but as he looks here corner comes up to take the flat i can't take it this guy matches right to the hook can't take it quarterbacks always know where your check down is always know where your check down is okay understand the look boom love it he gets right to his check down quickly get a completion okay we'll take that six yards they had the perfect coverage again you could say well, he could go down here because that corner plates offer yeah he probably could have but he didn't know that he expects that guy to cover there that guy to cover there like I said I think he thought this guy's deep enough that maybe I can get a play here but this guy sneaks up late that guy matches okay everything is really covered here or should be covered know where your check down is get a completion get yourself six yards really love it right there all right, so this is the, the big interception, okay? And this is a great teaching tool for all of us, okay? First of all, it's a teaching tool for uh, our, our wide receivers or our tight ends, right? I understand he was tired, but do what you're supposed to do even when you're tired. Even if you can't give full effort, don't make it up, okay? I tweeted a couple weeks ago, this is why I don't like receivers adjusting their routes along the way, I just want them to run. You run and then I'll make the decision because when they start adjusting, now that puts us in a bind as a quarterback. So really, all they're running here is the same play we just saw, the stick concept. It's a flat and then it's a stick right behind it. So as a quarterback, I'm trying to read this outside defender. If he goes running to the flat, I'm gonna try to hit the stick underneath it, okay? So that's what we've got here. That's what we're looking at, okay? So, okay, keep running, you're right, you're gonna be covered. Just keep running and give me the one-on-one -on -one throw here and I'll try to put it on the outside number and we'll try to be successful. But Everett here, okay, not only is he tired and does he run slow, but as he goes out here, he feels the defender go outside. So his first step is he kind of hesitates and starts to fall back 
to the inside. See that? See, I'm starting to adjust my route. I'm not supposed to do that, but I'm starting to adjust my, oh, I see that guy. I'm gonna make myself available, okay? And then, biggest problem right here, okay? Let's look at a couple things, okay? First of all, they, they missed some protection up there, so somebody's coming free and somebody's in his face. But quarterbacks, don't ever let one of these guys, when they do the wrong thing, force you into throwing it to them. Once this guy does the wrong th thing, throw it away. Okay, move on to the next guy. I've seen this happen too often that we allow this guy, oh, he adjusted his route. I'm gonna try to make it up thinking I know what he's going to do. Once he adjusts his route, you have no idea what he's going to do. This kills Justin Herbert right here because he tries to trust his guy and it's a bad situation and this guy starts to fall back inside. So he goes, okay, I think he's gonna go back to the inside. I'm gonna throw it there. And then he continues out here because again, he's making it up as he goes okay receivers don't make it up and, and again i know it works out sometimes and you find the hole and everything's great and we're excited it kills this guy when you start making things up and they don't know what you're doing it's really hard for them to make decisions this play cost them the game i go inside oh now i'm gonna fall back outside i'm just trying to find a hole i got pressure in my face think he's going inside justin throw it away throw it away and again i understand it's hard you want to just make a play, but throw it away in this particular situation, live for another down or work to your next guy and work the outside option right here because this is dangerous every single time. You anticipate he does something you don't know because you've never done it before and now we give up a 99 yard pick six and that could have cost us the game. Okay. Love this right here. And so here's the opposite part of this. So I wanted to put these plays back to back because this is how it works out sometimes. And so when a guy, okay, so this is Everett again. And so in this situation, I believe, and I don't get to see the whole thing here, but based on plays that they've run before, we got a go route, we've got a check swing, and he's running what we call a return route. So he's starting to the outside and then he's gonna return back to the inside. So we're gonna read this choice route over here. And if I don't have the choice, I'm gonna get my bodies moving there with my eyes and I'm gonna come back and read this to this on the backside. So here it is, ah, they matched right to the choice. I don't like it, great job by Justin to know, okay, where my check down is again with pressure in my face. But notice what Gerald Everett does right here, right? He's pushing out, he's gonna come back inside, but nope, I'm not, because this guy's sitting here, so I'm gonna give myself a chance and I'm gonna make myself open to the quarterback by sitting right here, okay? And it works out beautifully in this case. He sits right there, he finds the hole, we complete this and we pick up a nice game. So this is where we get into problems. Well, it worked on this one, didn't work on the last one. That's why I don't like it. I'd rather you just do what you do and if we don't have it, I'll throw it away. But what I like that's different about this one than the last one is you notice he turns, he finds a hole and he stops. Okay, if you're finding a hole and you're gonna settle, then settle, stay right there. Don't go jumping away from the quarterback, stay right there where you're settling so he knows where to throw it. The last one he thought you were gonna settle, he threw it at you, you bounced outside, we get an interception. So at least if you're going to do this, I like the fact that he just settled in the hole and gave his quarterback a good understanding of where he was going to stay. All right, great play right here. You know, we all talked about, we all saw it on the play before this. He goes to try to make a throw on the move and he can't even throw it. He throws it right into the ground. And now we come back on fourth down and we're saying to ourselves, oh my gosh, he's hurt. He can't even throw a 10 yard throw. What are we doing with him in there? And then he drops this dime. But here's what I want you to see. Here's what I love. Look what's happening. We're gonna double team Mike Williams. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna double team outside receiver right there. Not sure who that is. As a quarterback, when these things happen, our goal is to go, where's my one-on-one? -on -one? Where can I find my one-on-one -on -one receiver? Because that's the guy I got to count on to win. So we're going to double outside. That safety getting wide. We're going to double outside. That safety getting wide. We've got man-to-man -man here. We've got man-to-man -man here. And we got man-to-man -man right there. Okay? Look at this. Recognizes it, sees it, understands that the safety's outside now man they, they might have even been doubling 
Carter here. I don't think they are because of how wide this guy gets, but I think he reads the release here, the inside release, and now it becomes almost a double team on Carter, but he finds the guy that's not doubled, the guy that gives him a shot to get this first down, and then on top of it, this is what these players do. It doesn't matter if you play great the whole game. They make great plays at big moments. Man, dime right up over the top, splits the two, finds his one-on-one -on -one matchup to the space, and throws a perfect ball to set them up with an opportunity to get back into this football game. All right, so we come out on this play. We're going to run a flat. We've been running that flat stick numerous times. Now we come out and change it up, fake that stick, and we come back here to the post. All right, and oh, he gets him, but we got a defender right here, and Justin misses this throw high and up over the top and we miss it oh man opportunity right there good route everything looks good tough throw up and down over this guy quarterbacks always practices get down in the red zone you got to be able to get things up and down over linebackers and within the framework of the end zone when you've got small windows but we miss this one right here but you memory bank those things you memory bank those things because they came back two plays later on fourth down and we're going to run the exact same play stick Boop, we're going to come back to the post, and this is what I love. Yep, I missed one. I missed one, coach. Come back to it. I won't miss it again. Same relationship. He lets him go a little bit further because he knows that that guy's the guy that was in the way last time. Lets him go a little bit further. Boom. Now I'm going to throw it up and over, drop a dime on my guy, and we're going to go get ourselves a touchdown in a situation where we must have the touchdown. Great job right there. All right, a lot of good stuff there on the tape. Could have pulled out even more plays to teach, but some great stuff by Justin Herbert. Okay, some things that I believe the Chargers can clean up on to make his job a little bit easier. Some other things, big picture things to see, to be able to see pre-snap that will help you make the best decision post-snap. So a lot of great things to teach on this tape, a lot of things for both quarterbacks and coaches on this tape, but as we always talk about these young quarterbacks, man, you might not bring your A game, you might miss a few things, you might get banged up a little bit, but these guys are so good in the moment at stepping up and making the plays their teams need them to make, and that's exactly what Justin Herbert did, it's exactly what Patrick Mahomes did, even though he didn't play his best game, but that's why it was such a good football game, came down to the end, because these two young guys, forgetting about the mistakes that they made or how things haven't gone their direction, in the moment, making those big plays.